Hey, what's up everybody? I wanted to show you guys how you can get original Xbox DLC on an unmodded 360. In order to do this, you do have to know how to open your system up to determine the 16-digit motherboard serial. I have some information on the screen talking about that and how later consoles have some letters in there which complicate things. Xenon systems don't seem to have them, but anything later than that, you're taking a chance. Depending on your motherboard revision, it's in a different location. I have it highlighted here. There's a Xenon, a Falcon, and a trinity for a slim system. That's not every single motherboard revision, but it gives you an idea of what to look for. You have to remove some components in order to locate it on certain revisions, but that basically is what you need to look for. FAT 360s are a lot easier to open and determine the serial, especially Xenons, like I said. You also need to have a way to connect your hard drive to your computer with a transfer cable or something rigged up like that. This is an original 360 transfer kit, and they eventually did release one for the Slim 360s, there are third-party options available as well. Okay, so here's how to actually put the content on your system. Sorry about filming the screen, it's the only way I can zoom in close enough to show the text on the screen. So anyway, download your original Xbox DLC. Uh, this is Republic Commando DLC on RARD here. You'll see all these other folders and files, just ignore them. They're just for if you're running this on a modded original Xbox. The only folder we care about is content. Here we can see there's a folder called dollar sign C. This is our content folder and here's a map and that's the game ID right there. 4C41013. And then that is just the, uh, the number of the file right there. So it's like the second piece of content. Although there's only one in this case. Just make sure you know what the game ID is, and this is all that you need. It's just this uh, dollar sign C folder. There will usually be a dollar sign U folder as well, which is an update folder. You'll also want to grab that if it has one. Sometimes these will just be called C or U without the dollar sign. Make sure to add a dollar sign to the front of the file or the folder name. So just drag that out. You can get rid of the rest of that folder. And now open up the Xbox content tool. Now what you want to do, if this is your first time running it, you'll see this button called Keys. Click on that, and then click on Make Key Xbox 360. In the alias box, you can just put your gamer tag, and it will ask for your console serial, which is the one on the back of the system or in your about on your Xbox, and then the motherboard serial, which we got by opening the system up. And then just put those both in, substituting the non-hexadecimal values for the hexadecimal values if you had to find them and then add the key. Then up to open and then navigate to that money C folder and then go inside and that's that map folder that I was telling you about with the game ID. And then open up contentmeta.xbx check skip content hashing and sign content and then it will tell you it was signed successfully. Now once we've done that what we want to do is copy that content to our Xbox. This is the program that I use, it's called Party Buffalo. There are other programs like Fat Explorer that you can also use, but Party Buffalo is a free program. I will have a link for it in the description. I will also have a link to a higher quality video showing what I just showed in case you couldn't really follow it. Anyway, open that up, it will ask you if you want to run it on Windows. Come up to File, plug your Xbox 360 hard drive into your computer at this point and then device selector and it will show you your hard drive and here's your content you want to open up data compatibility Xbox one and then there's T data that's what we want all of your game folders will be in here if you've played games in the past. FFFE is for your custom soundtracks. I do believe you can add a custom soundtrack to 360 backwards compatibility by dropping the compatible files in there. I haven't tried it, but I believe it should work. But here's all of our game IDs. Now, since I haven't played, or maybe I have actually, yes, I've played, that's the one for Republic Commando right there. You can see there's nothing in it right now. Here's the one for Battlefront 1. You can see there's already a C and a U folder in there. You can delete these if you need to. If you want to write them over, you can just delete them. 
But here, let me just verify that that was the correct ID. Yes, okay, so that was the correct one. Now what you wanna do is right click and then inject a folder. And then here I'll inject that C folder with the dollar sign at the beginning of it. And it will add it to my hard drive. And that's it. At that point, you can close out. And I would go down and eject your adapter. Now before this breakthrough, only a few pieces of DLC were available on retail systems. Ubisoft released a lot of their DLC on discs like this one or OXM demo discs, but those discs were not compatible with 360s. You can see some content there. The only one that worked with a 360 was the Halo 2 multiplayer map pack, which is missing the last two maps. So here for Star Wars Battlefront 1, here's a preserved screenshot of what that content download menu looked like. You could download Java map for the Star Wars Battlefront 1 and play it online or offline, just like any other map. A bit different than Battlefront 2 version of it here. I've shown this in some other videos. This DLC install does work with the downloaded versions of original Xbox games, which is what I used to record that. For Star Wars Battlefront 2, here's that content download menu. Obviously, it can't connect anymore, but just a preservation of that. Here's some footage of that DLC with the Bespin map for Battlefront 2. There you can see I pulled up the 360 dash. Proves that this is, in fact, on a 360. I love showing this map because not a lot of people have the Star Wars Battlefront 2 version of Best Friend. This map is not available for the PS2 or PS3 versions of Battlefront 2, and it is not available by default on a PC version. You can download a mod map pack that gives you Star Wars Battlefront 1 maps. Don't ask me where, I don't know anymore. See the hero there from this DLC. Great map from Battlefront 1 brought over here. And here's a bit of footage showing hero gameplay from this DLC. Kit Fistu on Renvar Citadel. Again, this Xbox Live expansion pack was a really cool piece of content. And before this breakthrough, we got very lucky that they added this to the Xbox One consoles for backwards compatibility because before then, the only way you could get this content was to have a soft modded original Xbox or a hard modded 360 or be lucky enough to find an original Xbox or 360 system with this content on its hard drive on eBay or something like that. Because back then, if you didn't have it, you were never going to have it. So, playing as a Jedi is not as fun to me as playing as a regular soldier class, but the Force Orb is probably the most fun part of playing as a Jedi. And there's the 360 dash once again, proof. Alright, and here's Halo 2 showing those last two maps that were released in 2007 that weren't included on that multiplayer map pack disc, Desolation and Tombstone. Start up Desolation. Excellent maps. Slayer.
There, pop the dash again. This is one of my favorite maps for Game Slayer. Over. Obviously, this is available on the PC version and on MCC as well, but it's nice to have it on the original. Luckily, Halo 2 is cross-compatible between updates and DLC content, so if you find people with it, you can play. And here's Tombstone, another great map. Now, if Zach would Slayer. bring his glitch videos back up, that would be great, because there's a lot of fun glitches on this map if you had mods. And you could spawn things in. There's proof as well here that it is on the 1.5 update. Alright, now for some other games. This is one of the best Xbox Live games ever made here, Black Arrow. Show some of the different maps. Also, just as a side note, don't worry about going online with this. You won't get banned from Xbox Live for having these maps. It's not tied to your profile at all. Here's a map winner base. See, these are some pretty unique maps. A lot of people don't know about them. A lot of people don't remember that Black Arrow had DLC. Most people remember that regular Rainbow Six 3 did, mostly because Garage, which was superior in the original game. There's video on YouTube of me playing this on some other channels, spectating me. Excellent video game, one of the best online games ever made. And here's a real treat. This is the prison map. If you've played Rainbow Six Three Raven Shield on PC, you'll be very familiar with this map. It's almost a one-for-one -one port. I think it's missing a few rooms, but the outside is completely intact. Much of the actual prison cells inside are intact. It's just absolutely awesome that this was created. I never had a chance to play this game's DLC, but this would have been a killer map online. And there you go with the 360. And here's the original Rainbow Six Three, showing some of the maps for it. This, almost all of these maps were available on OXM uh, demo discs, except for two of them, including this Parkade map here, which I'm showing. But they were never available on a 360 after 2010, not till now. It's a very good map. Here is the legendary Rainbow Six Three Garage. Far superior to the Black Arrow version. Because the team spawn is just awful. again. Great games. Counter-Strike. Two maps were released for this game. They were actually on the disc, but they were only unlocked by DLC. Office and Inferno.
So very nice to have these as well. Obviously from PC version. There you go again. And just a little bonus. You can add Xbox Live Arcade games to your hard drive using the same method I showed, including this delisted game, Marvel Blast Ultra. I just showed you right there that my tray didn't have a game in it, so it's not being run off of one of those demo discs. It is only the trial. You have to have a JTAG in order to get the full unlock unless you bought the game already. But I just thought that was pretty neat that you could do that, because Marble Blast Ultra is fantastic, and it's nice to have it on the hard drive for this trial. Anyways, I just thought this was a really cool breakthrough. I'll have a link to another video that shows uh, a little higher quality process of actually putting the content on, and I'll link some downloads for all the software that was shown in this video. I want to give a thanks to Feudal Nate for discovering this and for programming the software for the XBX content tool and I want to thank Corpse for making the original tutorial video which showed how to do this and also provided an explanation for the problem with the hexadecimal values and I want to thank Pyro Fierce Deity from the excellent community for making me aware of this so I hope this was helpful for you guys and take care